good afternoon we'll be doing chapter 4 method of deduction part 9 here we'll be studying the fifth rule based on the rule of replacement that is commutative laws com the commutative laws are as follows p dot q is equal to q dot p second law is p wedge q is equal to q wedge p these laws consist in changing the places of the components that is these laws can be applied only for the conjunctive and disjunctive statements so we are interchanging the conjuncts and disjuncts the first law deals with conjunctive statement and allows us to change the order of the conjuncts second law deals with the disjunctive statement and allows us to change the order of the disjuncts let us take an example there is a table and a chair is same as saying there is a chair and a table let us take second example either i will eat cup ice cream or a cone ice cream is same as saying that either i will eat cone ice cream or a cup ice cream applications p implies q dot r p therefore r let us see how to apply the rule of commutation which rule can you apply your we want r r is in the first premise it is the consequent of this implicative statement so you can derive the consequent by which rule mp modus ponens p implies q p therefore q p implies q dot r p therefore q dot now we can separate r only if it is on the left hand side by simplification because according to the rule of simplification we can infer the left conjunct so there is a need for us to bring r on the left and we can change the conjuncts only interchange them only by one rule and that is commutative law so we'll write r dot q Third commutation. Now you can separate R by simplification. P dot Q, therefore P. R dot Q, therefore R. Thus we have arrived at the conclusion. Now we come to the next. We have F wedge G dot H, curl G wedge curl H, therefore F wedge K. Now one thing you have to do is you will have to commute it and then use the rule of ds because we want f where is f f is in the first premise and it is on it is a disjunctive proposition so if we want this f we will have to bring it on the right so we will do commutative and then we can apply the rule of de morgan's also here we get curl see the right side is given to you and you can get the left side by de morgan's law now you can commute it f wedge g dot h will give you g dot h wedge f now the negation of the first disjunct we have so we can derive the second disjunct by ds rule P wedge Q not P therefore Q G dot H wedge F not G dot H therefore F. Now once you have got F, you can add K to it by the rule of addition. P wedge P therefore P wedge Q F therefore F wedge Q. Fifth addition. Now we come to the next. Here also we want M, so we'll simplify M. now the s how do you get s only if you have l wedge m so 
m you have to that we will add l by rule of addition now since m wedge l has to be interchanged see here we must get l wedge and not m wedge so we will interchange the disjuncts and by commutative law and you will get l wedge m now the antecedents are same so you can derive the consequent s by m p rule so here p implies q then e therefore q l wedge m implies s l wedge m therefore s now we want t but t is on the right hand side we cannot simplify this by this rule should be on the left then only you can simplify so you can again apply the rule of commutation change the order of the conjunctions we get t dot n to commutation now you can separate t by simplification and lastly you will join the two s and g by conjunction p q therefore p dot q s t therefore s dot t this is 6 and 8 conjunction now we come to the next you can see that we want y and z how do you get y only if you have the negation of k then only you get negation of negative y so this is this rule is empty rule but you need to have this separate separate this so which is the rule by which you can separate that is simplification get okay now you will get by empty rule you get curl curl y negation of k will give you negation of negative y so this you can apply double negation to get rid of the two negations you get y once you get y now we want z where is z z is here and if you have the negation of u then only you can get z but this u negation of u is on the right hand side you cannot simplify it it has to be on the left so we bring it to the left by commutative law so you are changing the order of the conjunctions so you change here also the order of the conjunctions and you will get curl u dot curl k now you can simplify seven simplification and apply the rule of which is this rule ds negation of the first disjunct will give you the second one so 2 and 8 ds plus we have got y and z now we can join them by conjunction so y dot z 6 and 9 conjunction now we come to the sixth rule rule of transposition this rule is expressed as follows p implies q is equal to not q implies not p this rule is applied only to a conditional statement like the commutative law this rule interchange the components that is the antecedent and the consequent here we apply this rule only for an implicative statement so here implicative statement has antecedent and consequent we are interchanging the places of the antecedent and the consequent by negating both of them so that the truth value remains the same so let us see one example to say that if there is smoke then there is fire is same as saying that if there is no fire then there is no smoke let us take the applications a implies b b implies g now you can see that b and b is common you can apply the rule of hs p implies q q implies r therefore p implies r so a implies b b implies g therefore a implies g this is hs 1 2 now you have to interchange the antecedents and consequents by negating both of them that is the rule of transposition so we have applied the rule of transposition to third statement 
and we have arrived at the conclusion. Now we come to the next example. Here you can see that you want H and H is the consequent of the first implicative statement. You can get the consequent you can derive only if you have the antecedent. Antecedent is not D implies not E. You can either apply the rule to this statement or the second statement. Because rule of replacement can be applied either to the part of the statement as well as to the whole statement. So let us apply the rule and you will get curl D implies curl E. For the second I applied the rule of transposition. Now we have the antecedent with us and we derive the consequent H by MP rule. P implies Q, P therefore Q curl D implies curl E. Implies H, curl D implies curl E therefore H. 1 and 3 MP. You can see this. Here the antecedent is this. So now you can add by the rule of addition. We will add M. H. Thus we arrive at the conclusion. Now we come to the third one. We have two conditional statements joined by a conjunction. We have J horseshoe H. Now what will you, you do? We want K and curl J. Where is K? K is in the second conditional proposition. We cannot simplify it until and unless we bring it on the left hand side. So you interchange the conjuncts. First conjunct is L horseshoe M. Second is H horseshoe K. The mutative law you will apply and you get H horseshoe K dot L horseshoe M. Now you can simplify separated by simplification rule. And you will get H horseshoe K. This is P. This is K. Simplified. Now you can have common your H so, which rule can you apply? HS. P implies Q. Q implies R. Therefore, P implies R. J implies H. H implies K. Therefore, J implies K. 2 and 4 HS. Now, you can do, apply the rule of transposition and you will get Pearl K horseshoe Pearl J. Fifth transposition. Now, which rule can you apply here? Again, you can do is, you want C. How will you get? Only if you have the negation of the first. Right? So how will you do it? You will apply the rule of transposition to the first one. And you will get curl curl B horseshoe curl curl A. Let's see. Part of the statement we are applying only to the part of the statement we are applying this rule, and then you can apply the rule of double negation to get B horseshoe A wedge C. Now you have the negation of the first disjunct here, so you can get the second disjunct. You can infer the second disjunct by the rule of DS. P wedge Q, not P, therefore Q. B horseshoe A which C not B horseshoe A therefore C. Thus we have arrived at the conclusion. Thank you. We will continue in the next class the remaining rules.